James J. Hill was a giant of American history, a giant of American economy. He was not the first guy to make a transcontinental railroad. He wasn't the only guy to make a transcontinental railroad, but he was the first one to make it economically sustainable. We use the word sustainability a lot these days, but true sustainability is when an enterprise, a business, an idea can keep moving, keep expanding, keep going strong without external crutches and supports. And that's what Hill figured out how to do. James J. Hill designed, developed, funded, and built the Great Northern Railway. That by itself would be enough to earn him a place in history books, but he did so much more. His railroad, along with many other railroads, created a national unity. Uh, without railroads, the United States was hopelessly divided into small regions that couldn't communicate or connect with each other. The railroad united the nation. We can see here how the railroad tracks exploded across the country uh, and suddenly there were nearly a quarter million miles of railroads connecting different parts of the nation so it was easy to get from any one place to any other. Prior to the railroads it had been very difficult to travel by walking or by horses. Railroad was the big technology of transportation that transformed the United States between 1860 and 1900. James J. Hill didn't build the first transcontinental railroad, but he built the first sustainable one. There were other guys who built them, but theirs didn't last. They went broke. James J. Hill was successful. We're going to find out why. This is a library built in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Like many early industrialists, Hill donated millions of dollars, schools, hospitals, all kinds of good causes. He helped build American society. James J. Hill did so much more than just railroads. He developed breakthrough techniques in engineering that could be applied to other things like automobiles, airplanes, factories. He was an economist. He understood how money worked and how to make a business successful, how to employ people, how to not go broke. And finally, business management. He understood how to operate a large corporation and make it successful. As we explore some of the ideas, two concepts we want to think about subsidies. Subsidies are when governments give money to companies. All right, and perverse incentives. A perverse incentive is when you actually get the opposite of what you hoped for. Like a parent who's trying to make his or her child do more homework, but the child actually ends up doing less homework by a perverse incentive. So James J. Hill figured out real quick to avoid subsidies, avoid perverse incentives. And that was one of his big steps toward success. Subsidies create perverse incentives. The government offered money to some of the railroad companies and said, build us a transcontinental railroad. The government forgot to say, build it well. So what did they get? A low quality railroad. Even when the government got wise later on and said, build us a railroad and build it well, the companies figured out that they could build it just well enough to meet the government standards. Instead of trying to build a truly excellent railroad, they built it just good enough to clear the bar. Perverse incentives caused by subsidies. These perverse incentives motivate the managers of these companies to maximize the gain from subsidies, maximize the amount of money you can get from the government instead of actually developing a good product, selling it to heavy consumers, and making money that way. So perverse incentives actually cause companies to offer fewer services and offer lower quality services and goods and products to their customers. Railroads that are subsidized by the government, and this applies to any business, any industry that's subsidized by the government, 
will find the perverse incentive. The government said, build us a railroad across the country and we'll pay you by the mile. So what did the companies do? They built a zigzag route so that instead of going in a straight line to make it as short as possible, they made it longer than necessary and they got more money because they were being paid by the mile. Subsidies encourage mismanagement, bad management. First of all, because the managers know the company will get money from the government, whether it does a good job or a bad job. Secondly, because the managers are focused on getting money out of the government instead of getting money by selling products. And finally, because there's a misunderstanding of the basic core mission of the business. The business is supposed to be about building railroads and running trains up and down them. Instead, the business becomes about talking to government officials. Because James J. Hill rejected government subsidies, he didn't have any perverse incentives. He looked at things as an engineering product, said we are going to build as carefully as possible, use the best techniques, the best materials, and we're going to maximize quality, we're going to maximize service to our customers, we're going to maximize sales, selling cargo space to people that want to ship cargo on a railroad. James J. Hill had a macroeconomic perspective. He was looking at the whole economy, not just his railroad business. He understood that it was related to ships crossing the seas. He understood that it was related to buying products from distant places like Japan and China, and that it was related to selling products to Japan and China. He understood that it was related to farming, wheat, corn, cows, pigs, chickens. So he looked at the whole economy and planned accordingly. Because James J. Hill and his company rejected government subsidies, they found ways to be efficient. Subsidies make companies inefficient because there's no motive to use the money wisely. Hill used his money wisely, was efficient, and maximized quality. Subsidies do not overcome mismanagement. If a company is badly managed, then no matter how much money you give it, it will still be badly managed, so subsidies do nothing to correct bad management. Because James J. Hill rejected subsidies, he had to think outside the box. He had to develop the best possible railroad system instead of simply building whatever the government said to build. So he developed not just a straight line, he developed a whole network of branch lines, smaller sets of railroad lines that would feed into the main line. And the subsidized companies, the ones that received money from the government, didn't build branch lines, weren't even allowed to build branch lines, so their rail lines were not as successful. James J. Hill looked for synergy. That was part of his macroeconomic perspective. Well, how do different things cooperate? How do the sailing ships cooperate with the railroads? How do the farmers cooper cooperate with the railroads? How do industries in Japan and China cooperate with the railroads. It all works together, and if he has that perspective, he can do better. James J. Hill understood that to get a strong railroad, he had to invest. So he put money into it rather than trying to get money out of it. He bought better quality steel to build the railroad tracks. He organized agricultural growth along his rail lines, setting up farms, helping people get started with their farms. In the long run, these investments paid off. The railroad was stronger, lasted longer, ran more effectively, broke down less often, and all those farmers that he helped get started, they all shipped their grain, their wheat, their corn, their animals by the railroad, so he got them as customers and got a lot of money doing that. There is so much more that we could say about James J. Hill. Let's put it this way. If you're interested in going into business, you need to know about James J. Hill. If you're interested in going into engineering, you need to know about James J. Hill. And if you're interested in going into economics, you need to know about James J. Hill. Find a book, find a video, learn as much as you can. He set trends and patterns. He discovered principles that have lasted over a century and have made many businesses sustainable. There's that word again, sustainability. The true meaning of sustainability is something that can keep working, keep going on a reliable basis to serve people and help people. That's all for now. Bye-bye.